Delta Amplification sent me their LA25 Mark II to give a run through and uh, show you gang all about this fun little amp. For those of you who love to have your amps have super well thought out and overbuilt construction, this is something you should definitely check out. The LA25 is in 19 inch rack format, look at that, yes. Uh, with the whole black anodized metal front panel. This harkens back to all of the classic rack gear from 80s and 90s, at least in terms of aesthetics. Um, it fits in a 19 inch rack. They make a head shell for it, I guess. So you could pop that in there, but really it'll just pop in a rack. And it comes in around under 17 pounds and is only about seven inches deep. So in terms of rack amps, it's, uh, it's like a little mini miracle to squeeze all that three channels into a light, not super deep, heavy uh, rack. Because, you know, you put enough things in your rack and then it ends up weighing 12,000 pounds. Uh, and it's unmovable. So uh, this does not add to that problem. This is actually a problem solver there. It's an all tube head, it's running a pair of EL84 power amp tubes, and then the assortment of uh, 12AX7 preamp tubes, uh, which I could see right through there. It has a couple other really cool features that you should definitely take note of. It has a built-in reamping, so you see that the uh, the guitar jack is a, a multi-jack, so you could take an XLR and go in there as well. So that's quite cool. There's a built-in reactive load inside it, so you don't need to hook up to a cabinet if you don't want to. Also super cool. Uh, one feature which I would love to see on more things, and uh, this does it, when you plug in there is a DI output on the back. So that means you can track the amp, but you're also getting the clean DI just they're waiting for you in case you're like, oh, if I had just not recorded it with so much highs or whatever, more gain and stuff, you could go back and reamp. Uh, and this is one of those solutions that's helping you do it without all the extra bits and bobs that you would need to have in order to do that cleanly. It also has a virtual cabinet output. So you could run to your cabinet, you could run the analog cab sim, uh, through here and you could run your DI. You could be tracking this in numerous different ways. Uh, it is an analog cab sim, just so you know, they have a sound. It's not quite that IR glory, but it can be useful in uh, certain situations for sure. Let's go dig a little deeper into the Zuda LA 25 Mark II. We're gonna start on channel two with the dirt. <laughs> That's a nice full-bodied sound, and let me show you some of these specific controls that I'm using to get that. Um, I personally like the gain controls when they're up past noon. So um, if you're kind of running the masters lower, keep your gains a little higher, and um, you'll be rewarded. <laughs> And you can always roll back your volume knob if you need a little less or whatever of that. So over here, we have a lot of color controls for the LA25 Mark II. Uh, one important one, probably the most important one to me, is this open switch. We're in open right now. Get a little more. Personally, I liked open pushed in all the time. If you take open out, what it does is activate like somewhat of a compression um, and sort of changes the overall, well, take a listen. I feel like it maybe adds a little saturation and a little compression. 
Uh, the level dropped a lot, which which may be a good thing for you if you're trying to get some low levels going. Um, let's turn this up. <laughs> Going back, it's going to be louder, I think. Now, I always find the jump, either way, feels weird, but um, you lose some gain, but the sound to me opens up and it's a little more dynamic. So I prefer that. This uh, Burgett, B-R-G-T, is the bright switch. So we have bright in. I like the extra little push it does and the, the cut. Here it's in. It's not a mega difference at this setting, but there are settings that you'll really hear it come through. So I'm gonna leave the bright in. This little shelf off symbol here is super important as well. What that does is tighten up the bottom end. It's representing uh, a high pass filter or a low cut. So it's cutting and tightening up. And I almost always prefer that in. Um, yeah, I mean, I prefer it in. Now this is letting the bottom out. So it'll be bigger and looser and fuller. Right, got tighter. And you have the boost switch. This is also foot switchably, foot switchable. Uh, so that will boost up your gain and it adds a really nice flavor. You may even just want to leave it on all the time. Uh, I like it. really helps make channel 2 super versatile because you could roll your volume back for a little bit of gain or then you could engage the boost and you have a really big range of colors there. There's also this plexi mode which changes the whole gain sides, channel two and channel three, over to sort of plexi mode. That will drop the gain way down and will actually make a channel two be a really nice low gain channel unless you crank up the master and it'll get loud. Uh, so let me show you both of that, what happens. Totally changed the amp, right? Now it's way more vintagey. Now hold on to your butts because we're gonna get some some rocking happening here. We'll go there. Switching to channel three while you're in plexi mode gives you a whole nother color. Uh, 
that's a super cool sound. Super loud to get the mojo out of the plexi, but it's sort of worth it. Real cool. Let's go back down here. When you're back to the normal mode, channel three is a high gain lead monster, wow. Crunchorama, you know? of gain. Oh, there was a lot of gain because I was in the boost mode. Coming out of boost. Now here's something you may have noticed when I switched from channel 2 to channel 3. Look at the letters above the settings here. Very charming way to switch the channels and let you know what's there and then let you know which of these knobs is active at the time. Unfortunately, it, there's no light indicator for anything over here which would be super helpful to know if the boost is on or not. It, like, it'll tell you on the foot switch, but it's not going to tell you if you have the bright switch engaged or if you are have some, whatever. You can't quickly look over and know where you're at, but it still sounds good, so whatever. We've got this 2290 setup in the effects loop. The return volume is in the front, so it's not a blend. You still have to do any of your blending in terms of how much dry or how much wet to do that somewhere either in the box or in a, a separate submixer, but you do have a level control here. So I could turn on, here's dry. So I could set an appropriate level, uh, which is pretty convenient because if you put this in a rack, it's a little hard to get to those rear controls. And of course we have clean tones which uh, have their own EQ controls over here. You know, I'll run you through the uh, some EQ changes. It does do EQ changes just for me. I always kind of went back to that sort of place where it just sounds big and full. <laughs> Let me show you this amazing feature. I mean, it's a great simple idea. Run the DI through. 
just going straight through out of the DI out into the DAW. So let's say I'm tracking and I you know no one I don't realize it, no one tells me that I have a really dark tone going. Maybe it sounds great in the room or the monitors or whatever, and then you get them to the mix, you're like, oh boy, I played the perfect part, but didn't have the perfect sound. So I recorded the DI, it's always there. Check this out. And I could reamp it to a tone that works for what I'm going for. Now I've got the Zuta coming out of its analog cab sim, the virtual mic, so it's going straight there, XLR into the DAW. And there's two EQ controls. There is the modern when the EQ is out and vintage when it's in. So let me change the distance here. There's an internal load box, so you don't have to have the amp plugged into anything. And then the vintage side of it. If you can, I would use an IR, uh, but in a pinch, it's there, and you can get some useful sounds out of it. Just wouldn't be my number one go-to. That is the Zuta LA25 Mark II rack mount head from Zuta. Uh, I just love saying rack mount head. It's like, it makes me so happy to have a new product that is rack anything. So uh, yeah. Cool, Zuda amplification, they make pedals, they make a whole bunch of other stuff. Check it out, I'll put some links below, and uh, if you don't mind, hit the subscribe button because I have a whole bunch of other cool stuff. You're gonna miss it. Anyhow, thank you for watching. We'll catch you later. Now go play some guitar.